Hello there my friends, I'm Elephant TV. We'll be going over the reboot of the renowned TV show from Canada, The Raccoons. But first, you probably don't know what that show is, so to explain a bit of history, I've brought my friend Alexander, or Trainmaster A9, to go over its history. Let's welcome him to the video. Hello fans, I'm Alexander Side, and I am a huge Raccoons fan, and I'm ready to lay down my thoughts. Now, for those uninitiated, the Raccoons started out as a series of specials. The Christmas Raccoons, the Raccoons on Ice, the Raccoons and the Lost Star, my personal favorite, and Let's Dance the Raccoons. And while yes, the original four specials helped bring audiences into the world of Kevin Gillis, it also introduced a lot of the characters that were memorable. And as a kid in the 90s, I had the privilege to see the raccoons on syndicated reruns on the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, aka CBC. Like who, for example? Burt Raccoon, Cyril Sneer, Schaefer, Cedric Sneer, Ralph and Melissa Raccoon. Shave who? No, El Mustachio! I said Schaefer! I know, but who are we shaving? Not Shave, Schaefer! Oh, so is he a barber dog? Ugh, you're enjoying this joke way too much. Naturally. Continue. Anyways, before I was so rudely interrupted, there was the human characters from the original as well as some of the memorable side characters like Ingrid Bellamore, Donna, Aunt Gertie, etc. Now with the history out of the way, let us get to the five things I want to see in the Raccoons reboot. But first... Perfect. This should do it. What did you do to me?! Nothing. It's just, uh, a spell. Well, change me back, wise guy! Uh-uh-uh. You didn't say the magic word. It's a video-length spell. The sooner the video is done, we'll be back to normal. Well... I always said I wanted to be in the shoes of an animal, so eh, what the heck. Talk about irony. Now let's dive right in. The expansion on the human characters. Now before someone will come along and say, But Elephantibi, if they focus on the human characters, it'll be just like those cartoon adaptations like Smurfs, Yogi Bear, and Woody Woodpecker. Well that's where you're wrong. They were introduced in the specials and then season 1, but then disappeared in the rest of the series. Do you know why that is? Well, since their primary focus was the raccoons, so the human characters were given the shaft. But! There are fanfics of the human characters interacting with the raccoons. You can talk to my friend Vincent Birkin on that. That's a real shame, because what if the raccoons actually meets the human characters? That can be a great opportunity to give them development, like the main characters, which its reboot can expand on. All shows have supporting characters, some good, and others tend to get on their nerves. Can you list me a few, Mr. Saib? Well, there's Aunt Gertie, Donna Cat, Ingrid Bellamore, George and Nicole Raccoon, as well as Bentley and Lisa. What are they like, personality-wise? Well, Donna only made ONE appearance in the Raccoons, titled Join the Club. And aside from being voiced by the lovely, talented Tara Strong, Donna is also a bit of an arrogant and mean-spirited character. I'm gonna stop you right there. As in, the one that voices Twilight Sparkle, Raven from Teen Titans, and the baby from Ice Age? The one and only, Tara Strong. You were expecting someone else? Of course not. But what happened to her near the end of the episode? Donna went back to the city. She was never seen or heard from again. But to be fair, the episode joined the club was about cigarette smoking. Maybe Tara Strong was expensive and couldn't use her that much at the time. Damn, I hate limited budgets. To be fair, Tara was getting her feet wet, and she wasn't the prolific VA that many people know her today. Now, I don't hate Tara Strong, but good grief is she... OVERRATED! But I thought cats hate water. Wait, what?!
Have John Stroll returned to compose the soundtrack? What was John Stroll like before he worked on the show? To be honest, I don't know. Outside of the raccoons, that's where I know him from. But to be fair, Captain Punjab, the Kickstarter for the Thomas Fan series, used John Straw's music for his series, Thomas the Bachman Engine. And ironically, it was one of my inspirations for Thomas and the Raccoons trilogy. So if he can remaster the original soundtrack, it can almost be identical, like with the DuckTales reboot and the Disney live-action remakes. Am I overthinking this? A little bit. The Disney live-action remake thing is up for debate. Yeah, I can agree with that. You know the saying, the series is bad when the writers never watched the original. I know that all too well. I'm looking at you, all engines go. And that glare belongs to even Masters of the Universe Revelation. Now, if you're like me, I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to the raccoons, and here's a rule of thumb. Try to be faithful to the original source material, but at the same time, do something fresh with it. I mean, hello! It worked for Thomas in the Raccoons trilogy! While it's fine to have interpretations to your work, but straying it away makes it end up with Thundercat's roar. When done right, you get Zack Snyder's Justice League and The Jungle Book 2016. Hold on, I meant to be talking about shows, not movies. Some reboots done right are as follows, DuckTales and Animaniacs. Since series creator Kevin Gillis is at the helm of the project, I'm sure he'll find someone that can write well for the Raccoons reboot. Well, fingers crossed, I don't want a disaster like they did with Reboot The Guardian Code, because that was a train wreck. And dare I say, an insult. Or the Bob the Builder reboot. Now for a few honorable mentions. Not have Cyril Snare as a one-dimensional billionaire. Now as far as I recall, Cyril Snare, while he was a villain in the specials, and later turned anti-hero, I want to make sure he still has his good qualities. Such as loving his son Cedric, as well as acting sometimes as a mentor to Bentley and Lisa, like in Join the Club, for example. He's basically the evil billionaire character done right, unlike other ones. How much you want to bet to throw Mr. O'Hare into Evergreen Lake for being a twonk? Oh, I've got a better idea. Much better. A possible live-action animated hybrid film. Kevin Gillis wanted to be able to direct a movie like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. If you want to go back before Roger Rabbit, there was the National Film Board of Canada short film, Real Inside. Is that the short where the rat blows out a candle? That's The Cat Came Back. Wrong short film, Liam. And with that, this makes the last thing I'd like to see in the Raccoons reboot. And there you have it, folks. The top five reasons on what we both want to see in the Raccoons reboot. Now I can reverse the spell. Give me a sec. Well, that was fun. I gotta say, I gotta bring my avatar to the channel again someday. Alex, you're back to normal now. Ugh, thank goodness for that. I've got to turn my collaborators to animals again someday. Perhaps a pigeon? Wait a sec. I'm wearing a different shirt and my hair looks different. Well, that's what happens when I use my magic.